Hello football fans, Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you my Week 17 DFS NFL cash game picks. That's right, it's the last week of the regular season in the NFL. Kind of a sad day, um, but we do have playoffs coming up. We're going to have uh, the wild card round, the divisional round. We've got nice Saturday, Sunday slates, four game slates for those we're going to be able to look at. But jumping into this week, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Week 17 always is. Uh, different motivations for teams that are already clinched playoffs, out of the playoffs teams that are close, uh, players that are close to getting to, uh, you know, milestones themselves, stuff like that. But we're going to wade through it. We're going to look at a couple of my top cash game plays that I'm going to be using this weekend. And before we get started in those picks, for my Vikings gear the last week before Monday Night Football in one of my NHL videos, they completely let me down. And with the news that Marshawn Lynch is coming back, decided to wrap the 2-4, Seattle jersey that I had tucked away in the closet, been sitting there for a while. Also pulled out the Skittles. You can eat some of those as well. Uh, pretty excited that he's getting back. Looks like he's been in shape if you've been watching any of the videos that are out there. Not a great cash game pick, but uh, just wanted to rep that. Also repping the Jays hat. Sign Hunjin Ryu this week. Exciting week uh, for sports. Um, you know, if you're not a Vikings fan, of course, they made it into the playoffs. But we've got a tough road ahead as... Uh, Things haven't really gone that good against playoff teams this season. But I'm not angry. We're going to jump right into the picks here. We're going to get you some, some DFS dollars, some green screens. Let's start here at the quarterback position this week. Um, the first one that I'm looking at, I'm going to turn to, is Carson Wentz. He's obviously a little bit cheaper here, as you can see, on both sites. And with all the Week 17 unknowns, there's one, one thing that we can turn to is that battle of the NFC East between Dallas and Philly. Um, I, I lean Philly here a little bit because if they win, they're automatically and they don't need anything else. And Wentz is my top choice. Obviously, volume is king in cash games, and he's averaging 43.3 pass attempts and 275 passing yards uh, per game since week 10, going back to week 10 there. He's also hit cash value, which is 3 3x value on DK, 2x on FanDuel, in four straight and 11 of his 15 games this season. Excellent matchup against the Giants. They rank 31st against the pass and 29th in fantasy points against the quarterback position. All things are leading to a lot of volume here again for Carson Wentz. Even though he's, you know, lacking some targets in the pass game, he's definitely not afraid to uh, put the team on his back here lately and really uh, dig in um, and get, not only help the Philly fans um, and Philly as a team out get into the playoffs here down the stretch, but he's also helped us out from a fantasy perspective as well. Next one, there's a little bit of risk here on the other side. Uh, you know, looking at uh, Dallas trying to get in the playoffs. They need Philly to lose. They need to win. Um, Prescott didn't practice the first two practices of the week. He was limited yesterday. He's going to play. Um, there's no worry about that whatsoever. I definitely like it. Um, they definitely need him out there. Like, like Wentz, volume has not been a problem. As he's averaged 41 pass attempts and 317 passing yards per game since week 10. So very similar. He's, he's getting the same volume as Wentz, but he's actually been a little bit better with the passing yards right around that uh, over 310 per game, which is just excellent. Not quite the matchup Wentz gets, but the Redskins still line up. Um, they're 23rd in DVOA against the pass and fantasy points per game against the quarterback position and have given up the 10th most rushing yards to the quarterback position as well. So those are a couple quarterbacks I'm looking at in cash games. Jumping over to uh, the running back position, I'm definitely going to start with you know Ezekiel Elliott in that same game. I you know I could definitely see stacking Dak and Zeke together at their prices this week if you want to go that way. It's a must-win game for the Cowboys. They're ten and a half point favorites. Um, you're pretty much you're not getting 100% of the touchdown equity there with Dallas, but you're getting pretty close to it. Um, with the passing touchdowns as well as the rushing touchdowns from Zeke. You can also double up on those with the passing touchdown to Zeke um, to get your points that way as well. So they've kind of been a top cash game combination. There's very few running back quarterback um, stacks that I will do in cash games. You know, Lamar and Mark Ingram or some in, in certain matchups. But uh, this is another one that I will be looking at, especially in Week 17 with the motivations that the Cowboys have. Then I'm looking at Aaron Jones. As well, it looks like uh, Williams is going to be, well, he's, he's questionable, could be definitely out, but I'm not really too concerned um, about that 
He's been a bit up and down all season, but he's finally getting some volume down the stretch. He's out, out touched Williams, even with Williams in the last two weeks, 60 to 24, or sorry, the last three weeks, 60 to 24 in those three games. And despite a road matchup here in week 17, shaping up to be an elite game script for Jones as the Packers are 10 point favorites against a Lions team that's given up the seventh most rushing yards, ninth most fantasy points per game to that running back position. Safe in all formats with his projected volume and game script, but his best value comes on FanDuel, where he's the fifth most expensive, most expensive running back at the position. Then if you want to get a little bit crazy here, um, I know the Patriots backfield can never be trusted, but Michelle checks all the boxes this week. He's under 5K on DraftKings. That's where I'm really looking at him um, as a top value this week. I will look a little bit on FanDuel, but I'm more concentrated on DraftKings. Even though it is a full PPR, he doesn't catch a lot of passes. Just the, the price and opportunity seems to be there. Patriots have motivation um, as a win for them would give them a first-round buy. They're 16-point favorites, which is going to lead to a lot of rushing. Um, they're facing the Dolphins' 27th-ranked DVOA defense against the rush, second-most rushing yards per game to running backs. He's seen volume definitely trending in the last, last two weeks, uh, 23 and 20 touches, 96 and 89 rushing yards in those two games. So the volume's been there. The production's been there. The game script is there. They're huge favorites. They get an excellent matchup. He's just a running back that I will look to at 4,900 so that you can get um, one of the top wide receivers paired with a top running back um, if you want to go that direction and feel very safe about your lineup, especially in cash, like cash games like we're talking about here. So for wide receivers, Julio Jones and Michael Thomas are elite plays this week. I'm definitely leaning Julio over Thomas um, as he starts. And it starts with a huge discount on both sides, to be honest. Um, both Breeze and Thomas for New Orleans got their records. The Saints are huge 13-point favorites, which could definitely lead to a run-heavy offense this week, offensive game plan against a Panthers team who has been worse, obviously, against the rush as well. So um, that kind of reduces the floor and upside for Thomas there. So I definitely lean Julio. Julio and the Falcons have been out of the playoffs for a while. Hasn't stopped them at all from, you know, playing the role of the spoiler down the stretch. In fact, since their week nine bye um, after they started one and seven, the Falcons have gone five and two, averaging 26.9 points per game. Julio trails only Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams in targets per game on the season and is one of just four wide receivers averaging double-digit targets per game. Even better, since Calvin Ridley went down, um, on week 14, he after week 14, he went on the IR. Julio's caught 23 of an insane 35 targets for 134 and 166 yards. So the volume has been incredible. Matt Ryan has been absolutely feeding him the ball. The floor is immensely high, and he comes in a better spot, in my opinion, and cheaper than Michael Thomas because he faces a Tampa Bay defense that has been considerably worse against the pass on the season. They've given up the most receiving yards, third most touchdowns, and the most fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. And then for cheap, I'm going back to the well. Um, talked about him a lot in chat last week. I liked him a little bit more than Greg Ward. Is Steven Sims Jr. on Washington. Um, he's really come on here as of late. 21 targets over the last two games, catching 11 of them, which isn't a great catch rate by any means. He's a rookie. Um, he's starting to get more of the volume, which is what we like to see. 109 yards in those two games, but he scored three times. So he's being targeted in the end zone, even though it's going to be a different quarterback this week. Terry McLaurin is also placed on the IR. Um, so we can ex we can probably expect another double-digit uh, targets there in a game script where Washington's going to be coming from behind, going to need to throw a lot. Sims has seen the production with McLaurin in the lineup. Now he's out of the lineup. He should easily see. Even if he only catches 50% of his balls, I think he's going to get 10 to 14 targets this week. If he can get 50-plus yards, maybe even... Uh, two or three of those targets in the end zone. I think he can definitely score once again to end his season strong. Um, and then he's played 75% of his snaps in the slot, which I really like the matchup against the Cowboys' Jordan Lewis. He's given up over 80% catch rate over the last four weeks um, and a touchdown in three of his last four games. Obviously, I like Sims a little bit better on DK at 4,700, but even at 6K on FanDuel, I'll consider him in cash games just with the projected volume he's he's going to get with McLaurin out of the lineup. And we've also seen him produce two weeks in a row, so we know it's there. It's not like one of those players that's all of a sudden going from two or three targets a game up into that um, projected 10 targets per game. Uh, that's just not the case here because we have seen production before he get, is going to uh, climb into a bigger role. A tight end, pretty simple here. Dallas Goddard should, or sorry, Tyler Higby should be 100% cash games this week. 
Joking aside, though, he's probably going to be 70 to 80 percent in cash. He's been easily the best tight end in football over the last month with a whopping 44 targets, which leads all tight ends and is six most overall. He's caught 35 of those targets, which is also amazing, 80 per, which is an 80 percent catch rate, four straight 100 yard games. Oh, and he gets a game at the highest total, and both teams are ranked top five in pace. And the Cardinals have given up the most yards, touchdowns, and fantasy points to the tight end position by a mile. Like, over four fantasy points per game on DraftKings more than the next worst team. Um, so definitely lock Tyler Higby into your cash games and move on. Should be the first play you go and shove into your cash games this week. Dallas Goddard, you know, if you want, if you construct a lineup that you really, really like, you need that $500 and $700 savings on FanDuel and DraftKings, respectively. You could definitely consider Goddard. Ertz is out this week. Philly needs to win to get into the playoffs. The Giants have been okay. As you can see, they're 12th fantasy points per game to the tight end position, but the opportunity should be there. We're probably going to, he's coming off a big week here as well, um, catching 9 of 12 for 91 yards and a touchdown. I just think the opportunity and the price is there if you need that little bit of savings, but overall I am leaning Tyler Higby. And then on defense, looking at three here, obviously New England versus Miami is going to be the chalk pay up here. Um, as you can see, all three of these defenses that I like, one thing that I start looking at for a floor in terms of cash games is uh, the team's defensive line versus the opponent's offensive line. So as you can see here, New Orleans, New England, and the Rams are all sixth or better on their D-line in terms of uh, sack rates. And then uh, their opponents are all 27th or worse in their offensive line in terms of sack rates. So that's one thing I look at right away. Definitely in the Patriots, number one. They're number one in takeaways, so they also give you that elite upside there as well. Number two, I would probably say the Saints versus Carolina, starting a rookie quarterback here. Um, they're only projected for 17.3. That's Carolina. And then the Rams, even if Kyler Murray does play, he's questionable right now. He's going to be a true game-time decision, says Kingsbury. Um, the sacks are just there as a floor. He's been sacked, but if he is not in the game, I'm definitely going to bump the Rams up, probably as my number one cash game play, just from a points-per-dollar perspective perspective just given that the 3200 on dk 3800 on fanduel so that covers my cash game plays for this week um if you want to get a members only copy of the cheat sheet here showing all my cash game gpp and value plays highlighted as well as my rankings um jump into the rotopros chat if you're not a member yet get over to rotopros.com get your free trial today come in check out what we're all about and on top of that free trial you can jump into our nfl free roll that we got going on Sunday. The winner of the free roll is going to get uh, credit to their account so they can earn another week to two weeks. And then we also give away points for first, second, and third in that free roll. And we have thresholds that you can reach. We'll also release more credits into your account. Come in, check us out. Um, also, one more thing. If you are not new, definitely on top of all of that, uh, top of the free rolls, on top of the trial, you enter promo code CHRIS. Promo code CHRIS. When you sign up, you're going to get 50% off after those trials are over, um, whether you're doing a weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription. Thanks a lot, everyone. Enjoy the final week of the regular season. Let's go get some green screens and finish strong. See you in the playoffs.